ladies and gentlemen, this is Big Sue Jackson, and you're listening to Wrestling Cheers. Taking your way in the world today, takes everything you got. Taking a break from all your worries, so it helps a lot. Wouldn't you like to get away? Sometimes you want to go where everybody knows your name. And welcome back to Wrestling Cheers, where everybody knows your name, especially when this episode took over a year to make. This is Wrestling Cheers. We'd like to talk about things going on Northeast Ohio independent wrestling scene. We preview shows, we review shows, and sometimes we even have interviews along the way. This is an interview with Big Sue Jackson. I'm your host, Justin Summers, and Wrestling Cheers is brought to you by Midwest Territory. Please rate, review, and subscribe your ever listen this fine podcast, whether it be Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, TuneIn, YouTube, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Pandora, Amazon Music, or Podbean, WrestlingCheers.Podbean.com. Find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, Facebook.com slash Wrestling Cheers, Twitter.com slash Wrestling Cheers, and Instagram.com slash Wrestling Cheers. Email, if you so choose to desire, Wrestling Cheers at gmail.com. And like I said, this is an interview with Big Sue Jackson. I expecting to put this interview out this week. More on that shortly. But obviously we were going with review episodes and I was going to throw this in somewhere down the line. Well, this past weekend was Labor Day weekend. A lot of wrestling shows were going on as well as fantasy football drafts. And I had to work Monday. Luckily, I'm getting holiday pay for it, but nonetheless, that left time at a low for being able to figure out when I was going to be able to record at least the review for Chale at Night 2. Luckily, this was in my back pocket as just the week prior to it went out to Old Wrestling, and every year I get an interview there. I don't know whether it's been mentioned on the podcast within the past year. But last year at the old wrestling extravaganza, I sat down with Big Sue before the show and tried, main word, tried to record an interview. The problem was it rained and you'll you'll hear us talk about it later, but we're in this livestock barn. The roofs are metal. And when that rain was coming down, it made a pretty loud noise, a constant loud noise. So... I probably could have salvaged the interview, but in the moment we were both kind of thrown off from it. We actually took like a break, um, hoping the, the, it would pass. It did, but then it like ended up coming back. And unfortunately I can't retrieve the files because I don't know whether I've said it on the podcast recently, my external hard drive went down. I was, kind of do to get an upgrade because I have a three terabyte external. So I'm trying to uh, find time or whatever to do data recovery on or find someone who can do data recovery for me. I have years worth of pictures on there that have been backed up years worth of podcast stuff that have been backed up um, and a lot of stuff like that. So with that being so long ago, I'm pretty sure I threw that on the external hard drive and didn't even mess with the files of the recording. Like I'd never even listened to them. So when the extravaganza came up for this year and it came to doing an interview, I figured what better person than Big Sue sit down with him and finally get this done. There was also time within the past year where I tried rescheduling, but like our schedules weren't ever syncing up. So this this worked out really well for us. Uh, spoiler alert, since you're hearing it, yeah, it, it went well. It was a, it was a nice day. And, uh, you know, a little over 50 minutes of shooting the shit with Big Sue. So without any further ado, let's get into the interview with Big Sue Jackson. And we're back here on the podcast. And not even just back here. This is a cursed interview. This is one 
year, technically over one year in the making, if we count like talking about it before last year, but we've got Big Sue. Yeah, haven't we tried to reschedule this like four times now? Yeah, there's. I mean, I think the big one is the fact that when we did this the first time, we were in technically the same barn, just a different part of it, right. and these have metal roofs, and it rained like in the middle of what we were yeah, recording. Yeah, everything was fine, and then it's dark and it downpours, and pretty much renders uh, everything that we did unusable. Unusable. I I might have been able to salvage because like I just did the one with, you know, bulking season at a bar where the the music was going right but it was just like i don't know the rain just like how loud it sounded right i was like i don't know i've never even went back and listened to those files <laughs> just because it's like it's a big headache if i can find them i might throw them out the end of this episode just like a little bit of it just right. to understand like what we went through but it's just it, it also just kind of distracting yeah where it's Definitely, and and who knows how much of the rain like made it into the recording itself. I mean, I mean, I know it was loud from where we were. Yeah. So who knows how loud, how much the microphones picked up or anything like mm-hmm. that. But I'm glad to have another chance to do this. Yeah, and, this and the, cursed, cursed <laughs> interview. And the great thing is, like, I don't on 100 percent remember what we talked about. Like, I, I remember certain tidbits, so they they'll be easy to go back over. Right. And I won't feel like, oh, did we talk about that or not? It's just like. Who who knows? Like we're the only ones that <laughs> even do of that conversation of the fact that it's been a year, and you know we are back here at old wrestling. I love getting interviews at old wrestling, and uh, like this is pretty much all you do now, right? Well, it has been for like the past four or five years, but um, considering dipping the toe back in. Oh, really? Yeah, the wrestling bug is biting, and I've decided, hey. I'm 37, I'll be 38 in October, and I may as well get in as much now as I can before I can't. Yeah. So I'm not looking to do anything like super massive, like take on a super massive schedule, but maybe one or two shows a month. Yeah. I I think that'll be doable, mostly around my area, which is Indianapolis. Yeah. But um, anytime, anytime Marion Fontaine calls me to the old wrestling universe, I am more than happy to oblige. That's... Uh, so I know we talked about last time. Like I just I love this whole idea that Fontaine has done. Yeah. Because it's not just like, oh, well, I'm gonna pull like from like just like certain areas. Like he he will find the best of anywhere and if he can find a place to use you and he he will. Right. And and I, I actually like love the fact that what Fontaine is doing with old wrestling where there are different shows like the Cleveland show or the Detroit show or the big extravaganza Mm -hmm. and he'll use like certain people at each one. So they are kind of getting familiarized to that area. Like he's got different crews for different areas, yeah, which I think works out really well. Mm -hmm. But I also like when we all come together at the big show Mm -hmm. here in Norwalk, Ohio. Yeah. And the cool thing about it too is like you don't, you don't have to like go to every show to understand no. there's always i mean there's some stuff that's going to carry from show to show but there's going to be enough in it that you will be informed and it's 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 never like to me for me it's never like a big thing like we got to explain this to you it's just like there's something that will be said that will explain like what you would need to know going into the right. show and well i think another thing that he does really well like with these old wrestling shows is like each show is kind of compartmentalized where there's yeah. one big show long like storyline mm-hmm. so you get the beginning to the end of something during an entire show yeah sure it may carry over from the last show but like you said they'll s- explain what you need to know going into it and it's always it's not like it's hand holding either it's just like this is what we're doing yeah yeah and i just sat there i was thinking about this today like this is nine years yeah like next year will be number 10 yeah with 10, 10 year that blows my mind that blows my mind and so far fingers crossed i've been on every single extravaganza and i'm super excited about that i i was here for the first one and then because like i literally just got my cdl right like i missed like so many years and then when i went back going local i was like all right i gotta start going back to these because at least go to the extravaganza because i was there for the beginning right and watch how much it had grown over the the extravaganzas you're just so fun So fun. Like for the past two days, I've been getting like nervously excited knowing that in a couple days I'll be in this horse barn in Norwalk, Ohio, ready to do the extravaganza again. And it's an atmosphere unlike any other show I've ever been to. Oh, yeah. And it's 
I mean, right now it's like the best kid friendly, absolutely wrestling show out there, absolutely. Especially after a certain company's no longer around anymore, right? But uh, yeah, and it's this little treasure, right? Like people, more people should know about it, but obviously because it only runs like three times a year, yeah. maybe four on like the crazy occasions, right? But still, it's like. If you can travel to, to get here and just experience it once, it's too. It's not. It's all. We're, the, Fontaine's still able to get like names in here. People either on their way up or someone who like. You know, we got we got um, Ruby Soho. Today. Yeah, we got Ruby Soho today. And before this, like few years, like we had Danhausen before he right. got to be that big name that he was. And I was like, so many people like really focus in on like what he is he has done. Right. And I'm just like, you got to check out his old wrestling stuff. Yeah, like, you definitely you, do. Like you don't have to watch a lot because there's not a lot of it. Right. But it's witnessing this different character well and i love the fact now that um you can go to jerry's internet wrestling emporium yes yes independent wrestling.tv and check out like the entire archive of old wrestling yeah it's pretty much all on there now mm -hmm. so you can see it from the beginning up to where we are today and then may take a little while for the show to get edited and i know this one will be up eventually too yeah, yeah, yeah. so yeah it, it's it's i mean i i, I don't want to gush but i i love iwtv Oh, me too. It's it's something that I I preach. It's like growing up, trying to get into like other wrestling. Mm -hmm. Like you had to be a tape trader. You right. had to maybe it had to be on your local TV to like get other other stuff. But we got to a point where now we're even like we got to a point with DVDs where that was like oh you can buy from Smart Mark Video, which is great. But you know you're spending like. 10 20 bucks a pop well, yeah, yeah, I, I remember yeah. like when i was getting into independent wrestling too like around 2003 2004 like i had my local promotion mm -hmm. i didn't know much outside of that mm -hmm. and then they brought guys in from ring of honor like nigel mcginnis and then they brought in uh chikara guys yeah and that that really changed my whole perspective of like what independent wrestling was even mm -hmm. like i was used to seeing these same guys but then um then I know my trainer, Billy Rock, ended up going out and doing a Young Lions Cup and then being a semi-regular on the roster for a little bit mm -hmm. from like 2006 to 2008. And like that brought me into it. So I was looking for those shows and then seeing those shows, I found out about my favorite independent wrestler, Eddie Kingston. Well, not independent anymore. That's another one. Like where he's gone. Oh, my God. Like... And I, I, I'm definitely one of the people I will judge you. Like if you say you don't like Eddie Kingston and if it's like not for a real good reason, which there's not a lot, like I will just discredit you. There, there was actually, there's podcasts I've, I was listening to and like when he first came around, they just started like discrediting him. And I'm just like, your credibility is gone with me now. Yeah, yeah. If you don't believe in Eddie Kingston, Eddie Kingston is the most believable guy in the entire professional wrestling business. Full stop. Mm hmm. Yeah. Like... He's he's up there with Dan Housen for me of like people you saw just work and grind yes. to get where they're at. And yeah, like it, it's not easy. I've had this conversation with with a, a friend in independent wrestling who's in kind of not like a really big uh, territory. Or I I was talking about like yeah you got to grind and blah blah blah. But he was like you know that's you know it's, it's not easy for everybody to do. It. I'm like yeah no I understand that. Yeah, like but it took a lot for them to do it. Yeah, and it's going to take a lot for anybody. Like just to walk in and like get something is next to impossible but then when you have talent like that that's undeniable mm -hmm. it, even even though you're grinding and when it finally gets to the point where it gets recognized even though there are the detractors yeah like and the tr detraction is bullshit but oh yeah oh my god like if you, if you don't believe in that guy mm -hmm. like what are you even doing like what are, what are you even watching exactly like he's and being like spoiled enough to like be, be able to be around him and talk to him like one of the best dudes. Yeah, absolutely. And like, there's like a list of people that I could talk about in independent wrestling where they're just awesome to be around. Even right. like when going back to like Kevin Steen, Kevin Owens, like, mm -hmm. like I, we were having this conversation on Twitter with uh, Ed from Pod Van Dam where he was just like, like he doesn't care if like if wrestlers make money. And I'm just like, I throw up Kevin Owens. And he was like, well, like I care more about like people I know, like, you know, more local people, which I get, but it's like that dude, Kevin. Like he loved Cleveland, he loved Biggins. Yeah, and for the big as a family man, I know he is. Like I, I want him to get all the money. I do like, am I best friends with him or and all that? No, but no, but it's someone I want to see good see. people do yeah, good. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Someone that you see that you want to do better. Yeah, 
there's there's plenty of you know scumbags like in professional wrestling and some that have made it to the big heights but like you look at owen steen and you're just like no that was a dude that you know went against so much and then also like being the family man that he is like he's one of those dudes like i don't know if i've ever heard a real bad thing said about him right and if I did, like, I I don't remember. I don't, I, and and it, it'd be kind of hard to believe. I, I mean, not that you shouldn't believe those things, but it'd be kind of hard to believe about someone like him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's, I don't even know, man. It's, it's just really exciting to be here and to see, like, the evolution of what people came from and what they became. Mm-hmm it's really exciting and then like you know going back about independent wrestling and everything on IWTV the thing that I do love about what Fontaine does with old like the when it comes out like maybe like having the spots of it where it's uh, black and white yep. or the, the commentary sounds like an old radio show yep. like it's it's the little aspects that like most people Right. Won't put into that kind of thing. Well, and not only that, like I was actually watching back. I, I had a friend ask me like about some of my matches in old wrestling the other day, and I went back and there was the uh, tarred and feathered match that I had with um, Inky Scoops and Rory Henry McHenry a few <laughs> yeah. years ago, where I may have end up covered in tar and feathers. But um, before the match, like there's even a history of this match going mm-hmm. into the match that was actually put in the edit of the of the show mm-hmm. so like even people who hadn't watched the show or hadn't watched old wrestling to that point could see where this came from yeah. why we're doing this yeah which i think is a really cool aspect too which i would like to see more independent like promotions do like it just shows that they not that not that others don't care about their product, but that there's real love, care, and attention to detail put into yeah. what they want put out. I think it's, it could be for a place like this because it's not running once a month that you could put that those extra details into it. And that makes it, sense. It, it, it makes a whole lot of difference. And, I mean, we're to the point, like we mentioned Shakar, but like, is there really any place around like this anymore? Like even similar and even even when Shakar, like they, with them being like a little bit more modern, right? Like they weren't going like these extra steps of like well, we got to do this, or even the fact of like, I know that I love where you'll have walk around characters, people who aren't scheduled for matches, just walking around, right? They they might be, end up being in a match this show, like you know Theodore Roosevelt might you know step in and right. do something, or you know it could be someone like you know. Uh, Arthur MacArthur, he before he had a, his first official match, like he was just a guy walking around. It's it adds to the atmosphere. And also, you don't know what to expect. Like just because you see a guy walking around uh, in gimmick, where it's like, oh, he's going to be in a match. It's like no, it just adds to the atmosphere. In you can't do that anywhere else than like a place like this, to where we're really trying to take you back. Right, and, and I'll forgive you mentioning Artie, but. Um because I'm taking the oh, yeah. odd sepia button from yeah, him today. Yeah, you will. I'm, um, but I'll be rooting for you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, but yeah, you're right. Like, you never know who you're going to see. Like, Babe Ruth walking yes, through the crowd. Yes, yes, That was a good one. Um, newsies, popcorn vendors. Like, and you never know who these people are going to end up being. hmm Yeah. It's a really cool atmosphere. I think one of my favorite, uh, I don't want to call it a cameo, but someone I think... He might have just had one match here, mm-hmm. but it wasn't the extravaganza. It was uh, Orange Julius. Orange Julius. I love how that was portrayed on yep. that show. Yep. To where you can get that gimmick into an old setting, mm-hmm. but not have it be the exact well, like what he's what he does now. Right. Like, w- like going back and watching that on IWTV because that was. That was a fair show, I think. No, that no, was, it wasn't. No, unless he was on a he could have been on a fair show. I was thinking when uh, that was one of the Mahal shows. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. think that was the first live stream. Okay. Because I uh, Pedro did commentary and ring announcing for that show, because mm-hmm. which I love Pedro on good old Rodimus Deluca. Yes, <laughs> but him like because like being in full character of like I have to I have to be this old man. I have to walk from commentary to the ring oh my god and i can't like 
walk at a normal pace i gotta be old right old and old so he, do, he does all that but i remember re-watching that and obviously it's not cut up because it was a, it was a live stream right, right but it was like that's the only match that i could remember him being and he might have been in more mm-hmm. but yeah that's another another great example of like you never know who you're gonna see and like what i'm looking forward for this show more than anything it's just because we haven't seen them here yet as the main event Ah, Ruins Goons. Because I, I know I know your love for the main event. Yes. And I'm excited to actually see them in person. Like I haven't had a chance. Like I've seen them on AIW shows. Yeah. Once again on IWTV because I live in Indianapolis and can't get to Cleveland to see these shows, mm. but I am able to watch the live streams. Yeah. So I, I I'm getting a feeling for these guys and they're damn good. Oh yeah. But I want to see them what are they what are they bringing to this show? Yeah. Because I think in the history of old, there's only one person that wasn't fully in gimmick and it's somewhat uh, forgivable. And that's uh, Smothers. Oh yeah. Cause like he, I mean, that's just Tracy. And it's like, we, we it was more fun just having him on the show and do what he did. Wrestle the bear. <laughs> Un- unless uh, you watch, I think is it uh wrestling road Dri- diaries where he like, openly calls Fontaine by his real name or something <laughs> like that. And it's just like, ah, uh, some others. But I know, uh, like, so I want to see, like, what how what they bring because, what like, what they normally do isn't something that's easily, like, oh, you're going to be... Right. You're exactly going to be old school football players. But you're going to be old school, but it's going to be, like, a different, I'm guessing, a different feel. Well, yeah, yeah. It, you, you're going to get a different feel from seeing the main event in PME than you are... A, seeing Ruins, Goons, mm-hmm. and the Shoeshine Boys. Yes, yes. Which is... Yeah, it, it's going to be interesting to see how they change up that whole perspective. Mm-hmm. Right? Or even if they they do something different, like it might be sports related, but it might be something else. I don't know. Right. I don't either. Yeah. I don't either. And the cool thing, because like, we got the promo pictures, but obviously since they haven't been here yet, there's not this like in-gimmick right. uh, promo pic. So it's like, ooh, like, this is actually going to be a surprise. We're going to see something completely different for them. So right. I'm, so as soon as I saw them on the poster, I was like, oh, okay. I, I, <laughs> I like debuts here, yeah. especially with people like you. You just don't know what they're going to do. You wouldn't necessarily expect to see in an old school gimmick either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm really excited to see what they bring to the table as far as, like, I know what they bring to the table as far as wrestling. Mm-hmm. But I want to see what they do at old wrestling. Yeah. I'm really excited about that. What's the Indianapolis scene like anymore? It's coming back. Okay. <laughs> um, there are a there is a Naptown All Pro Wrestling uh, run by uh, Jay Rose. Oh, he actually runs out. Oh, yeah, cool. he. Well, it's him, Chase Holiday, Sean Kemp, and Calvin Tank. No, Hoodfoot, and I think Tankman may be a part of it as well. Okay, but. Um, they started they, they really care about the community yes that, yes that we're from like especially the community that are from the far east side and it's been known as kind of a dangerous place mm-hmm. and they're teaming up with organizations in the area that uh help promote like programs to cease gun violence and like give back oh, to the community yeah. so i'm i'm really excited to see what they bring to the table they had a couple of really good shows in uh at the end of April that are also on IWTV. They did a no ring show. I can't remember if it was sometime in June Mm -hmm. and they've got a show on in September on September 11th Mm -hmm. where they're bringing up a crew from North Carolina to to take on a crew from Indianapolis in because J Rose likes his like, uh, throwbacks to certain events that have happened in Indianapolis history. There was a a basketball game in 1981 between IU and North Carolina. So like two of the best teams, college teams in the nation. Yeah. So he's taken his all-stars from the Indianapolis area and they're bringing up the all-stars from North Carolina. Okay. And we're going to have a uh, six-man tag match for bragging rights. That's cool. Yeah. I really like what he's doing and what that whole team is doing, trying to help out the area and trying to bring just da- damn good wrestling to the area. Yeah, like there's there is something about Indiana where it's like 
there's always been kind of talent there. Yeah. But like pre COVID, I felt like they were on the rise. Cause I mean, you had two groups that were getting a lot of bookings and mm-hmm. then COVID kind of killed one of them. Yes. And which it's, it sucks to see, but understandably why one member is no longer around and shouldn't right. be around anymore. But the fact that now it seems like both of those groups have kind of started to work together mm-hmm. to be one. Like right. they might not be like, oh, we're one group, but it's just like we're representing Indiana. Right. And we have to do something because it seems like just from, from an outsider's perspective, it's like the best of Indiana or like most I ever hear coming out of Indiana is Southern Indiana. Right. Just because like that's like with the arena and everything. Right. Louisville. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, yeah, Paradigm. Yeah. All, the, all those you promotions got, that run out of the arena. Yeah, so you got that and then Black Label Pro. Black Label Pro for the North, Paradigm, and all the other assorted things in the South. Right now in Indy itself, Naptown All Pro, there's Flophouse Wrestling that's just trying to be a, a party mm-hmm. that's running in the same building that Bizarro used to run in. Okay. Um and and there's another promotion starting up in November uh, called Wrestle Arts that also is uh, trying to take another community focused. Uh, like they've registered as a nonprofit in the state of Indiana, so they're okay. trying to take another community focused uh, look at the area. And it, it'll probably be a mix of a lot of the guys that you'd see elsewhere, along with some names. Like they've announced Flash Flanagan. Okay. And. Uh, I can't remember who else. Randy West. I can't remember who else that they've announced so far, but they they're starting to slowly get it going, and they're coming in November, which I'm excited about because it's a show five minutes from my house. Those are the best. Yes. Like even though I'm not a wrestler, with AIW just announcing Wessapalooza, mm-hmm. and in Kent, that's I did I looked it up. I want to say it's around eight miles from my house. Yeah. And I'm just like that's like the. Akron shows were the closest. This is even closer. Right. And I'm like, this is awesome. I'm halfway busy that day, so I have to like make some uh, plans to, or I can go from what I'm doing to that. But, right. But still, like, I have to because it's so close. Right. And, and it's always those close shows that even if you, like, it's AIW, so you know what quality you're getting into. Yeah. But even if it's like a new promotion, like five minutes from your house, like you're going to go and enjoy wrestling, even if it's not necessarily the best. Mm -hmm. You're still going out, having a good time, watching some people get their reps in. Yeah. For me, though, it's going to be it has to be from a promote. Like if it's a new promotion, I could test them out. Right. But if it like there is a promotion like fairly close to me that literally ran or still runs right around the corner from where I used to work, which I had like a. I had like a 15 minute drive to work and it was all back road. So it wasn't that, that far. Right. I won't go to that show. Cause that is like, it's a, like a bad promotion. You've been burned. Mm-hmm. You, well, not necessarily you, but you, you know, the reputation. So yeah. you know, to stay away. Yeah. That's fair enough. And just like being around the, the, uh, scene long enough to where like, I know like who the, some of the bad promoters are. Gotcha. Or like if I see certain wrestlers on a show, it's like, yeah, that's... That, that's a immediate red flag. Yeah, or my favorite is like all of a sudden a promotion pops up out of nowhere, local, and I'm like, I can't name you a single person on right. this card. Like, not one. So it's like, I don't know. Like, are they untrained? Are they coming from just somewhere else? Because I've, I've seen that before. Right. But should I go? Like, it's... But it's like, like if you're trying to establish like a new promotion in an area, you're going to want to have at least a few people that people know, right? You would you would think, but I don't know. There's I think there's some promoters, and this is just me guessing as a fan, where like they're running to run, and they think like, oh, people come will come to professional wrestling. You will, yeah. But also like consider the market, and with with Northeast Ohio, we're they're really good mm-hmm. there's a lot of like great stuff out there and you're gonna have to compete with that yeah so it's like oh do i want to spend you know granted like your ticket might be cheaper than aiw but but are, at, are you going to be the quality that i'm going to need yes are you going to have the same people i get to see at the shows as mm-hmm. not just the wrestlers but like the people the crowd the people the faces you know yeah and even like that was like aw was my second promotion i ever i ever went to mm-hmm. and that uh was it was also my second show 
and the one before that was which is sadly a company that's no longer on that I loved, which was PWO Prime Wrestling. Okay, because of, like they had TV, so that like I didn't have to go to certain shows; I could just watch them on TV. Right. Even though I, I started going to all the shows, um, but but yeah, I was going to TV taping, so like I would know what was on TV before it hit TV. Right. So it's like, the, uh, but I knew what to I knew what to expect early on with like both of the like really good companies. So then when I started like go outside of that bubble, I was like, okay, like this is tolerable. But I, I've learned like who the bad people are. Like I'll, I won't ever name the promotion on microphone or the promoter. But there's this one dude who, back in the day, is the only person I ever heard say something bad about Johnny Gargano. Hmm. And it's just like, he, yeah, like no. I don't, I don't think the problem is him. I think the problem is you. Right. And he's the same kind of person that would. uh like, I think he's, like, always the champion in his own promotions. So, it's just like, yeah, uh, we're... But then you think about it. There's a reason why Johnny is where he is, and there's a reason mm-hmm. why you are where you are. Mm-hmm. And that's a dude that I think has been around the... Not Johnny, but uh, this particular promoter has been around for a while and has got no traction. Hmm. But yeah, I don't want to... I don't I don't want to go on that aspect. But it's like, yeah, yeah, like, knowing, like, where to go. And the fact that Indiana is coming back is, like... I think the only real Indiana show I've been to was, well, outside of Black, uh, Label. Outside Black, of Black Label. Label and anything in the South, anything Indianapolis, because I won't count the GCW stuff right. or AIW right. that was there, was uh, was Bizarro. And I liked it because it was like a combo of uh, old wrestling and Chikara, you know, maybe, you know, Chikara Midwest right. with like all these different gimmicks and just... And not necessarily family friendly. Yes, not necessarily family friendly. Yeah, let's. I, for, I forgot. It's been so long. I did forget about that aspect. But it was so. It's. It was so much fun. There were stories, and it was fun, mm-hmm. and uh, I miss it. I really do. Yeah, because it it was another one that brought it brought together a lot of people from like certain areas. Even the fact that I'm willing to like come from Ohio. Yeah, you came from Ohio. I knew people coming from Tennessee. I knew people who came from Pennsylvania. Mm-hmm. Like it did. It brought a lot of people together, and. I miss having something like that in Indianapolis, mm-hmm. and I, I think the group at Naptown All Pro is trying to make strides to kind of be that way a little bit again. Yeah, in a in a different way. Yeah, but being something that the Indianapolis community can be proud of. Yeah, Flophouse is doing it like with the party style wrestling. Mm-hmm. Um, like I said, Wrestle Arts is starting. Uh, there's there's a little promotion in. Uh, Greenfield, which is just east of Indianapolis, called Summit Pro, that uses a lot of people like you'd see at Naptown All Pro, like, mm-hmm. and a lot of the people that you would have seen at Bizarro. Mm-hmm. But it's just place to get your reps in, place to grow as a performer. Yeah, and those places are sorely needed. Yes, the only way you're going to have a good scene is if you have a place for everyone to get better. Especially to like kind of like bringing in like Bizarro Chikara here where people don't they're they're not themselves most of the time yeah like you'll have the exceptions like myself being one of them yourself fontaine uh the strong arthur that we won't go into his full name right now out of respect but challenging people to like okay i get you have this what else what, can you do? What else can you do? Yeah. Because that's actually one thing I loved about PWO. PWO had Eric Ryan as cursed. Mm-hmm. It had a different Fontaine that I would see at AIW because that right. was him more being the heel going up against LeBar, which was still hands down one of my favorite stories. Was, he, was he Megastar at that point? Yes. Yes. I and miss Megastar Marion Fontaine. Pre, right before COVID, he teased on bringing it back for a while. Like, for like certain shows, like me, I think maybe he was he was going to show up at Gauntlet, yeah, as Megastar, which I really wanted. Just like just give me that taste because that that was the Fontaine I fell in love with. I mean, I love this Marion Fontaine. Right. I love like all these different ones, but I have a soft spot because I haven't seen that Fontaine since twenty twenty thirteen. I think. Right. But by the way, speaking of Gauntlet, that Fontaine spot, uh, Bushwhacker <laughs> in and out, Chef's Kiss. Yes. I absolutely loved it. Well. What was it? I had seen something like he had surgery the day before, like yeah. before he like. And it's like, well, he's gonna be in it. Like you, you are not gonna you have can't a break gauntlet. the streak. Yeah, it's like the, it's a other conversation I've had of like, okay, uh, we have Mister Jaylet is Colin, Mister mm-hmm. Gauntlet is Fontaine. A lot of people are claiming to be Mister Abso, 
Wes is call, calling himself Mr. Re- uh, Wrestle Rager. <laughs> now I'm trying to figure out who the hell is Mr. Hell on Earth. But it it's like, yeah, you, you can't have a Jay Lit without Colin now. Right. You cannot have a Gauntlet without Fontaine. Right. So him coming out, doing that that uh, bushwhacker spot, and then just like, all right, well, I'm going back. So and like the, the music didn't even stop. Just yes, perfect. Absolutely perfect. Where it's like, you keep the streak alive. He doesn't really get hurt. Um saves his himself from the surgery that he had of, of it uh getting worse or whatever but yeah that was that was a good one um where were we talking about before that <laughs> Got off the talking about uh independent wrestling in indianapolis we we got on on that and then you uh, about pw oh 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 yeah yeah pw the the mega star of like being able to just watch somebody do something different elsewhere to her tested them of like their character right of like okay like you this is good but this won't fit here what can you do and it's not i don't think you see that much creativity right on the indies when you when you do it it is great so when you have a place like this bizarro chikara and if you can have places that kind of promote of like maybe we want certain things a little different so you can test your creativity of like mm-hmm. and you cannot have to blur the line of like well like Danhausen. Well, I'm Danhausen everywhere. Like, right. I'm this. I'm with this particular character. It was like, no, he came in here. You could you could tell it was the same guy, same kind of thing. But he found a way to to bring it into this mm-hmm. and have it all make sense. Silent film monster, kind of silent film slash vampire because he would never go into the ring unless he was invited. That's true. That was always my, my that's true favorite little detail because like he would wait for the referee to say like come in, and then he would. He would go in. And then I think the last extravaganza he did, I remind him of his, because he did, right before Fair Show, he did like a promo video, uh, or right, maybe it was before or after, like where all these like animals were, and he just kept yelling, shame, shame, shame. <laughs> and he kind of forgot about that, and I yelled it in, in uh, one of his, the last match he had here. And he's like, oh yeah, shame, shame, shame. <laughs> so it just like seeing somebody do, do that, actually like with uh, his micro brawlers and his figure, I'm like, I want, I want an old wrestling want version. Old wrestling. <laughs> like this will mean nothing to nobody, but I want the old wrestling version because it w- it was this little fun thing. Oh yeah, yeah. But oh man, we could talk about old wrestling all day long. We but, could. <laughs> yeah, for me, like you were talking about how you got in, like you got in, like you got in early, like what I would consider like independent wrestling. I mean, well, like it's been around, but like we're talking like that's in the middle of like territories and like brands uh not brands but but like wcw being bought out and you could from the outside looking in of like that history it seems like it's like independent wrestling like really started like to grow there right around that 2002 2003 era like the beginnings from like roh yes onward tna yeah and all that stuff like i got in 2010 okay no 11 do the math yes it was 2011 end of 2011 and Every, I, I miss so much, but going back to what we were saying too, like if I had IWTV, mm-hmm. it would have been so much easier. It really would have. And being able to just like if I want to go back and watch, I can go back and watch any old AIW show whether I was there or not. I right. Can, I can go back and watch the car show whether I was there or not. Which I've only I only I went to the only show that they did in Cleveland when I was going to shows, which right. had like El Generico. It had. That's the main one I remember. I know there. I don't. I think <laughs> I, the Bucks might have been there. Well, and I know for myself too. Like the promotion that got me in independent wrestling, Insanity Pro, actually does have some of their archive on IWTV, so I can actually go back and revisit some of that myself. And it's weird for me seeing myself in the crowd, but you know, <laughs> I have fun. If anybody ever finds like old uh, AIW shows or old PWO shows before I had my beard, they're like, "You look so weird." I'm like. That's what I looked like at the time. <laughs> it's like I, I was clean shaved, and then eventually I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna let it grow out. And it got to a point. I'm like, yeah, I really, I can't go back. I did once, as my wife is like shaking her head because there was one Halloween I did do a clean shave because I did uh, uh, uh what, what's his first name? Belcher, Gene Belcher. Oh yeah. Like I, it's an easy costume to throw together, but I was like, I'm. I was in drama club in high school. Like I like to, I want to go full commitment. Like if I can look like the character, right. I want to look like the character. Right. 
So I shaved it <laughs> the day of. Oh, man. I have a video of it all getting shaved off. And Mistake. <sighs> Worth it because, like, being, like, full commitment. Like, Genuine. I, you you, yeah. you got to commit to the bit. Yeah. But, like, any picture I have from, like, that Halloween to, like, February or March mm-hmm. is, like, uh, I hate that. Like, I'm <laughs> just clean shave. It just looks weird. Or, it's like, it's... My wife said on camera that I, I look like my mom. Oh. Stop it. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I had I had to go full metal. So whenever people see, like, the old, like, any, like, stuff like that, they're just like, oh, my God. It, 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 it's weird, too. Oh, I can only imagine. Like, I haven't seen the pictures. Now I'm going to have to look up an old show and see you without the beard. It, well, I, uh, you'd have to go AIW more than anything. Okay. Because by the time like old started, I know I, I had a, I had the f- full facial hair. But like, if you go twenty twelve AIW, I would say I went. I believe I went to all the shows that year. Like, if, and I'm always, I'm almost always first front row. So you can find me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not a hard person to miss, but it's like, oh shit, or one, ooh, it was. Uh, used to be on youtube it was like pwo i forget the name of the show but it was when matt justice like turned on labar and his team okay i'm literally front row and this was like right after a job interview so like i knew i was like (laughs) clean i was like pretty clean shaved and like i've went back to look at that a handful of years afterwards i'm just like oh my god i can't i can't do it i can imagine like for you being around like so long like all the just being a fan, like all the things you've seen. Yeah. Like, like I know what I've seen in my time and it's like, holy shit. Like that's like, you have like almost another decade on me. Well, I mean, I, I got to see the rise of John Moxley on the independence oh, yeah. because he was a big, like big fixture in, at insanity pro. Mm-hmm. Like he and Jimmy Jacobs had like a feud that lasted a year. Nice. Had, had matches that ended up, brawling out of the building and we were on like a main street there in Indianapolis. They brawled into the middle of the street. Like that's not insanity. Insanity. John Knox, like especially that's why I'm, I'm sad that I completely missed out on his independent run. Cause mm-hmm. it seemed like he was, you know, he was obviously from Ohio. So he was in Ohio a lot. Right. And a lot of other places too, where it's just like the dude was undeniable. Now like two of him, like I'll hear, I, I've seen videos online, like TikTok where people would be like, well, he, he shouldn't do that style anymore. He's above it. And I'm like, you if he was doing it just to get famous back in the day, right. fine. But if he's going back and doing that style now in GCW and everything, he's doing it because he likes it. Well, it was like John Moxley to me, like started out. He was just this regular old like technical guy and then a switch flipped and then he became dangerous and then yeah. he became a star like started insanity pro did some iw mid south dragon gate usa and then he just became undeniable Mm -hmm. just undeniable that man was a star i'm sad we never got the john moxley or technically dean ambrose at that time versus mick foley that they were teasing that were they were doing it like not on camera as much they were just social media and everything Mm -hmm. and had its own buzz to it or was like the thing you don't always get in wrestling anymore of like you know is this real because of the, it was never on TV and it seemed like they had a real issue. And we find out years later, Foley was like, yeah, I just couldn't get cleared. And it's like, oh, my God. Foley is my favorite of all time. So it's like I would have loved to see that. He's a dude that I love, but like I've, I've never been truly infatuated with him. Like if I had to pick a favorite character, though, it was it's always Cactus Jack. Mm-hmm. Like whether it be like the iconic shirt. Yeah. Even his music, like I always love that. Which I think is that like a royalty free song. I think it is. Like, I think it is. I love that song. <laughs> okay, um, you know what? Let's uh, let's start to wrap this up. Don't want to leave it hanging there on uh, Foley stuff. Let's get into the Fave Five questions. All right, uh, let's start with question number one. Favorite cereal? Cinnamon Toast Crunch. That's a 
a highly popular cereal. Like everybody, like I like it. I just prefer Golden Grahams. See, Golden Grahams are good. I just love having that little bit of cinnamon sugar on it as well because it's practically the same cereal with cinnamon sugar. I, I know there's a little bit of difference in texture. Yeah, there's a little bit different in texture, and I want to say like. I mean, the squares might be somewhat different taste-wise, yeah. but like, I always get, yeah, they are somewhat the same. Actually, let me, let me amend that. Okay. Walmart has, or Malto Meal has a s'mores cereal, which is uh, Golden Grahams, uh, like Cocoa Puffs, and Little Marshmallows. Post used to? They might still have it. I haven't got it in a while where it's, it's pretty much the same thing. Right. And I remember, actually, back when... Dude, it was like, oh, fuck. It was five years ago when it was uh, when I had Derek on, because it was not that long after he debuted in AIW, where we were talking about that. And I told him about that cereal, and he's like, what? I was like, oh, yeah, like I love Golden Grahams. And it's basically, it's literally Golden Grahams, Cocoa Puffs, and Marshmallows. <laughs> and it it's the best s'more cereal ever. Like, even the one that they brought back not too long ago. Like, I always, I thought that one was okay, but, but this one was top. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I could not beat it. Uh, question number two. Favorite game show? Favorite game? Oh man, that's a hard one. Like I grew up on game shows. Like There's so watching all those kids game shows, like back in the day. Like, mm -hmm. do, do you remember Masters of the Maze? No. There was a, there was a whole thing. JD Roth hosted a whole slew of them. Um, there was Masters of the Maze, the Family Channel back in the day. There was one that kids like competed on dirt bikes yeah I, I can't remember the name of it masters of the maze but there was a whole maze gimmick um and then at the end of the show they ran through the maze but back from my childhood probably legends of the hidden temple when it comes to nickelodeon shows like that's everybody's almost everybody's favorite i'm more nick arcade nick arcade was fantastic though too like like if if I had a chance to compete on any of those shows, I would pick Nick Arcade. Maybe because it's like it's one of the most least physical right. game shows they have. Right. So like I don't have to worry about like all that kind of stuff. But obviously, like the big dream is like go th to go through the temple. Well, like think about Nick Arcade these days. Like if they were able to reboot oh, like all the VR stuff and augmented reality stuff that's out there now, mm -hmm. like with those kids battling the game where they could never touch the right spot or always ducking at the wrong times. Imagine how much crisper it would be now. Oh yeah. It, it's also like, just now think about it. It sucks that they moved everything Nickelodeon out of Universal Studios. Yeah. Cause imagine like, okay, you don't have to have the legends of the hidden temple anymore let people walk through the main like let people walk through the temple because mm -hmm. we all want to do it you see that they rebooted it for adults wasn't it like a was it the game show or like this like movie no they rebooted the game show for adults okay i think it was on uh i know it's on one of the streaming services probably like paramount, paramount plus because yeah that's nickelodeon well i don't think it was nickelodeon that redid it oh i mean yeah because that is possible they don't they might not have owned it but they have rebooted it for adults. I've seen like one or two episodes of it. Like it's not as good, but it's it doesn't scratch the itch. I, I can't lie; it doesn't scratch the itch that watching those old shows did. What would you rather own, though? Uh, a temple medallion, because that's like that was the big thing that they had. Yeah, you can buy the shirts now; it doesn't pick them, but you can't temple medallion or a piece of the aggro crag, a glowing piece of that radical aggro rock. Dude. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. I've known people who try, they, they try to find that on eBay and they're, they're, they're wondering like, did these people actually get that? Or do they get like, like this is for your TV, but you get something else. It's not as good when you go home. Right. But <sighs> even if they, they repurpose, if they repurpose those yeah. and like resold them, like people would snatch them up because there's so much nostalgia for like Nickelodeon kids. Like mm -hmm. I was a Nickelodeon kid. I, I definitely was too. And then even like growing up, there was a channel, Nick Games and Sports, where yeah. they like re-showed all the wild and crazy kids. And, wild and uh, crazy kids, yeah. yeah. Wild and crazy kids, Double Dare, uh, Legends of the Hidden Temple, Guts, all of them just like on a loop. Yes. It was I, fantastic. I loved watching that one. I, every time I think of uh, the Nintendo game like Track and Field, I think of uh, Wild and Crazy Kids. Oh, yeah. There was a game that they used and that's the only time I ever saw somebody play it. Mm-hmm. And, like, I knew people who had the game, but never the pad. Right. So, like, I always think about, like, that game and that show. Like, they're intertwined to me. Uh, question number three. Best Starburst flavor. 
I, of the I, originals. I, I'm probably going to have a very controversial opinion on this. Um, lemon. Number one? Ooh. Lemon is number one. Ooh, team Lemon, stand up. Uh, okay, rank them. Lemon, cherry, strawberry, orange. Which which works for me and my wife, mm-hmm. because I love the lemon and cherry, and she loves the strawberry and orange, so we just get to split the pack. I think of all of them, it's just like, I, I have orange like the worst, because it's just like, lemon to me is special, cherry is special, strawberry is okay, a lot of people love it, it's whatever, but orange, I'm like, it's just like... It's just there. It's just an orange. Like, I've had, there's better orange things out there. Yeah. For that one, it's just like, I would have, whether it be the candy or the new C4 energy drinks they have of those flavors, mm-hmm. I just... Give me one of the three flavors over orange because it's just bland as shit. I thought out of the C4 ones, the strawberry was probably the best, though. It's been a little bit since I've had them. I know the Skittles one, like if you like Skittles, like that one is Skittles, pretty good. I wasn't a big fan of the Starburst cherry, but I like the Starburst strawberry. Yeah, I gotta retry that. It's, It's been a little. I've been on a ghost kick. Ghost is good. Ugh, the Swedish fish one. Oh. oh, yeah. That is my, uh, my I call it my Saturday drink because like it's so special right. that I want to have that one day a week and I'll, I have every Saturday off. So I was like, I want to enjoy it and all this kind of stuff. Like save it instead of like getting burnt out on, like have like a couple during the week and then like it just doesn't feel the same. Right. I, want, I want it to be special. Your Saturday drink. That's yes. Fantastic. Uh, I think we're on question number four. Um, How do you like your steak cooked? Medium rare. To me, to me, that's the real right answer. Like, rare's fine. I've had rare once, and I'm like, I didn't hate it, but I'm just like, there's something about medium rare. Right. It's just like, it's cooked enough. It's still got the, the tenderness of the meat. Oh, my God. Just, just like, the story. I had an anniversary this past week. My wife and I had our 12-year anniversary as a couple. Congrats, man. We went to a Brazilian steakhouse. Oh, yeah. I've been to one of Get, those. Getting, getting that meat, especially the picanha, medium rare, and it just melts in your mouth, and you have some uh, like a little bit of a crispy fat cap on it. It's mm-hmm. just divine. Divine. Yeah. I only went to one of those once, and it's just like, got to go hungry, and then like, just like, do you want it? Yep. Just... Yeah, just keep coming. Like, and I went hungry, and then I didn't eat for a day and a half afterwards. Wow, <laughs> I couldn't go a day and a half, but still, like, oh, just I, I want to try everything they had. Like, I don't know. It took a while for me to just be like, all right, turn it over, Adam. I'm good. Like, but yeah, medium rare. I used to be medium. I, I've kind of gone down to medium rare, and I think that's perfect. Mm-hmm. Uh, question number five. I really want the Jocelyn Navarro question here. Uh, tacos or burritos? Street tacos. Shokai? Street tacos. Like, not not some weak-ass Taco Bell tacos. Like, actual street tacos where they give you the double the double corn tortilla with... Uh, I, I usually go with the carne asada, mm-hmm. uh, onion, cilantro, a little lime to squeeze over the top, maybe some pickled vegetables. Yeah. I don't know if I've had... I, no, I've had, I think I've had street tacos. I think... Some of the best Mexican I've had is the uh, just like outside of like there's some restaurants around us that I really like, mm-hmm. but uh, go into like like certain food trucks. Oh like, yeah, I've been in the Chicago area sometimes. Like they've had like these little like food trucks come up, and not only like the regular food, like it's more of less more of a pickup truck with uh, they stop and right. get out what you what you need. But also I've been to Laredo uh-huh. and like having oh, some like I mean you're you're like literally a stone's throw away from the border, right? And, like, it's all like every gas station just has like homemade stuff. Oh my god, it's, that would be so good. It it, it 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 was really it was really good. It's been a long time since I've had that, but I know there's a, there's a, like some Mexican places around us that I I love, and there is something about like I mean their tacos are kind of normal, like a, mm. like a street taco type thing, right? But what like the shell is different, right? The, the meat is different. And I don't, I cannot explain like what it is or I'm like, this, this is a hands down just better right. than what people are like used to with Taco Bell. Like I like Taco Bell. I, but, I'm not going to shit on Taco Bell. It definitely has its place. Yeah. But just like burritos have their place, but street tacos are the way to go. Yes. All right. Last question. Uh, question number six uh, for you. Um, since Red Old Wrestling, give me your, Top three favorite matches you've had here. Okay. Um, t- 
hard and feathered versus Rory O'Henry, o- R- Rory O'Henry McHenry and Inky Scoops. Okay. Um, I actually really liked last year's with Beauregard the Butler. Yeah. And um, me versus the Lion Tamer Dustin Lillard, which was on like the second or third extravaganza. Okay. But but the tarred and feathered, hands down. Oh yeah, that's one of my favorite matches I've ever had. There's like certain like headline matches that old wrestling has had where it's like we're doing something a little different, like whether it be you know Smothers versus a bear or yeah. uh, Judge Hugo versus Fontaine with the wheelchair match. Or right. That. Like like I was showing someone that match the other day and they're like, what? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it's impressive. And I've seen Fontaine do like similar things in matches, not with a wheelchair, but a stool mm-hmm. or something like that. Right. And like it's it's something different, something special. Into where like when you when you have those matches here, like everybody's gonna remember it. Right. Um so yeah. Um any final thoughts or last minute plugs before we go? Uh you can And finally we did it too. We we did it. We the, did the, it. the the curse is over. <laughs> um you, you can find me on Twitter at my name with the three for the E is Sue. Um, you can find me streaming most Sunday nights at twitch.tv slash stream of inspiration. And uh, yeah, streaming with my boy Otar. And yeah, that's pretty much where you can find me. Awesome, man. Thank you. Thank you. And there you have it. The interview with Big Sue Jackson. Huge thank you to him for finally being on the show, finally getting everything worked out. And as always, a big, huge thank you and shout out to Marion Fontaine and Old Wrestling. Obviously couldn't do these episodes without his help. Or at least his okay to pull a wrestler aside before the show and do an interview. Always love going to these shows and supporting great people. All right. Let's start to wrap this show up. Of course, you can find myself at jsummers330 on TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram, much like you can find the show on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Facebook.com slash wrestling cheers, Twitter.com slash wrestling cheers, and Instagram.com slash wrestling cheers. Email if you so choose to desire wrestling cheers at gmail.com. Like I said earlier in the show, please rate, review, and subscribe wherever you're listening to this fine podcast whether it be Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, TuneIn, YouTube, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Pandora, Amazon Music, or Podbean, WrestlingCheers.Podbean.com. And you can find all of these links on the link tree in the show notes. Check out our podcast friends, such as Pod Van Dam, Super Fantastic Podcast, It's Evolution Baby, The IndieCast, Sobros Network, Biff Radio, The Game Marks Podcast, Powerbomb Jitsu, Spotlight Series, Fully Posable, Positively Pro Wrestling, IWTV Guide, If You Catch My Grift, At Odds With Wrestling, Marks With Mics, X Over, Observational Banter, This Ends At Prom, and Porch Talk. Check out our other non-podcasting friends such as The Mystery Men, Redline Radio, Mouse's Wrestling Adventures, VHS Party Tonight on Instagram, Danger Zone Video, in Mount Juliet, Tennessee, Heart of Gold, Toy Hio Toy Show, Time Capsule Toys, Stay Tough, Smoke and Jay's Barbecue, JCP Designs, Midwest Territory, Southern Underground Pro, and the official graphic designer of Wrestling Cheers, Moy Boy Designs. That will do it for us here on Wrestling Cheers, where everybody knows your name, especially when you are the new owner of the Asepia button on At Odds with Wrestling. Later. It's the wrestling cheers. Get up on your feet. Praying in your day in the middle of the week. And you gotta love the show. Yeah, you know it holds a title for the best podcast. Talking wrestling in Ohio. Finishing a cold one. Take a load off. We ain't all about the prohibition like Josh. So we cheers. And then we sit back, other shows are in the trash, kinda like they Nick Stapp. Like the name is Matt Justice, wearing all the gold. Wrestling Cheers is coming to a close. The number one podcast going in the game. And one day, everybody's gonna know the name. It's the Wrestling Cheers. This is Platinum Max, signing off. Ohio, good night. The world, good night.
We love you. We'll see you next week.